Hey guys, Kildare here, and this is the series where I take quotes from the masterpiece The Art of War by Sun Tzu and apply said quotes to MOBAs and online games in general to help you guys understand the philosophy and strategy behind warfare. Let's begin. Today's quote of the day is from chapter 3, quote 17. It's pretty long, so I'll divide it up and we will dissect it as we go. The quote reads... Thus, we know that there are four essentials for victory. Number one, he will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. So let's have a look at this one for a minute. So it seems pretty obvious, but regardless, sometimes this simple quote can leave our thoughts under panic and stress. For example, if the enemy team is going for an objective and your team wants to contest this objective because it will deliver a powerful blow to your chances of winning if you let them just have it, but your team is at a 2-3 to three level disadvantage. They have alts and we don't. Do we fight? Well, the situation, of course, is circumstantial. Like most situations, there is no one yes or no answer, but for this case, and most, most of the time, the answer will be no. But regardless of this, sometimes you and your team might dive in anyway because you are put in between a rock and a hard place. You know you can't just let them have the objective, but at the same time, you are too disadvantaged to make a difference. And if you do enter the fight, the difference you would make would probably not be in your favor. So what do you do? Well, once again, you have to establish that you cannot do anything to change the situation. So then, once you get some understanding of this from the quote above. Simply put, you have to let them have it, but don't waste your time just watching them. You can go out and earn experience where it is safe, get camps, or, well orchestrated, you can turn the tides. Here's the example. On Black Arts Bay, the enemy team is going for a boss camp at the top lane. They are level 10 and your team is not. All five members must attend to kill the boss. Rather than trying and failing to steal the boss or just die and further the enemy team's lead, your team can all go down to the bottom lane and make a quick dash for the fort and or keep. Do as much damage as possible and once the boss camp has been taken by the enemy team, you can all hearth back to safety and kill the boss. Doing this strategy may work in your favor and outweigh the damage the golem would have done to your structures. With this plan, you may have closed the level gap, do significant damage, no one dies, and your team will not take too much damage from the golem. Moving on, we have part 2. He will win who knows how to handle both superior and inferior forces. So this one you might not fully understand straight away, but for the most part it's saying if you have an advantage, use it. So handling a superior force to yours is shown through the example I said with the boss camp. Essentially, don't try to take on an enemy that is stronger than you. And should your enemy be inferior to you, by all means take full advantage of it, just don't get cocky. You will probably notice that if the enemy does not know how to handle being behind in the race, and you know how to manipulate them, then you may make the gap even bigger and make vector victory even more secure. Part 3 He will win whose army is animated by the same spirit through all its ranks. It will do wonders for you and your team if you are all on the same page. If you can all manage to think alike and work together, it also greatly helps you if you all have one leader or shot caller, and you are all aware of it. I'm sure we've all been in those games, in both receiving and the giving end. Where a team is perfectly synchronized, and when a team fight breaks out and they all aim for the one target and decimate said target, that then puts the other team into disarray and it becomes a massacre. Having that team coordination is probably one of the most key features to obtaining victory. Part 4 he will win who prepared himself, waits to take his enemy unprepared. I'm sure we've all learned from Illidan at this point that we should always be prepared, but this does not always happen of course. Just a single screw up, one wrong step can and will cost the game at times, so we should always be prepared for that. Your real goal with this quote is not to become the one who is not prepared, but rather the attacker, setting up an ambush or catching the enemy off guard are key aspects to this, but at the same time, be aware that any ambush can backfire. Which leads me to the next quote of the day, quote 18, which reads, Hence the saying, if you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. 
If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. This quote is pretty intense and is very vital to the core of PvP. In the end, either subconsciously or consciously, we all like to think we all know ourselves and the enemy, but it's quite the large learning curve to realize that that is the case or not. To put it simply, you need to know your own strategy, not just running out onto the field and going autopilot, just attacking whatever comes within your range with no sense of strategy awareness of your surroundings. So that explains that part of the quote, know yourself, but what about the rest of the quotes? Well, I'll explain it in an example. I'll be using chess, as I'm sure everyone is somewhat familiar with it. Going into a lane and having it a 1v1 situation, just you and an enemy, is a lot like a game of chess. Knowing the rules, of course, is important, as well as your own advantages and disadvantages, but let's assume both know these facts. Now comes the deciding point, which person knows both themselves and the enemy? Well, what does this mean to begin with? How I interpret it is that how can you read your enemy? Can you look at said enemy and know his next move? What he's going to do next and what he will do? This all relies, of course, on probability. For example, if you can read your enemy, in this example you would see that he is setting up for a 3 or 2 move checkmate strategy. The important part, of course, is reading this and realizing it before it is too late so that you can counter it. Simply put, if you can read your enemy and yourself, you can counter him and beat him. If he can read you and you can't read him, he will certainly beat you. Really getting deep into the enemy's head is pretty complex and requires a lot of experience, but the first step of outsmarting your enemy is learning these basic steps. It gets much more complex continuing on after this, I might explain it in a future video. However, if you have watched some of my gameplay, you can see that sometimes without any evidence given to me, I can track down and get an enemy when they are vulnerable, and this is due to me predicting the enemy's movements. They have not anticipated this and I have gotten a kill. A stepping stone towards understanding your enemy is a simple quote not from Sun Tzu, which is, to turn the chessboard around. Which pretty much means, if you were the enemy, what would you do right now? What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? In other words, how would you beat yourself in a fight right now? And once you've established it, do everything in your power to prevent that from happening to you. I know there are more things to take in and add to the equation, like what if the enemy is smarter than you? What if he is not as smart as you? What if you do not think like him, or he does not think like you? And what if he is completely unpredictable, etc, etc. But covering those topics gets really complex, and you can only learn more with experience. I might do a video in the future, but for now, let this video be the stepping stone to understanding your enemy's mind. And of course, what happens when you fully understand your enemy? You will achieve victory. Thanks for watching guys, this Art of MOBA video was pretty big and really delved into the psychology of warfare. I hope it did not get too complex for you. Thanks again for watching, I hope this helps you guys out there on the battlefield. Like if this helped you, feel free to leave a comment if you liked it or if it helped you, or if you want to ask something, and of course, if you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. I always welcome new faces, and I hope you like my other content. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.